Denver, the city by the bay, the city that never sleeps, the city where I have an eight hour layover because I'm a bad planner and a sucker for cheap flights. The Denver airport has been shrouded in mystery ever since it opened in 1995. There are like dozens of conspiracy theories about the airport, so I made it my mission to get to the bottom of all the mystery before my flight departed the next morning. What's so weird about the Denver airport? I'm glad you asked. The airport is literally twice the size of Manhattan and has at least five levels of underground buildings that they like apparently abandoned immediately after construction. Construction was delayed by almost two years and went three billion dollars over budget. And there's this tunnel system down there that was allegedly designed for automatic luggage sorting, like in Toy Story 2. But they also stopped using that. Because of this. The theory is that the tunnels actually connect to a nuclear survival bunker under Cheyenne Mountain, which happens to be part of our nation's nuclear defense system. Easy access for high-ranking officials to fly in and seek shelter in the event of an apocalypse. I don't think it's a coincidence either that the capital from the Hunger Games is most likely built on top of or nearby modern-day Denver. This article has a paywall, but the title's enough for me. Do I believe in these conspiracy theories? No. But I wasn't gonna let that stop me from investigating. I landed at 11 local time and my layover had begun. Eight hours to go. So I set out to pursue objective number one, finding sustenance. The airport is laid out in three different concourses, all connected by underground trains. And each terminal has a central atrium with a different design theme. I landed in concourse A, where the theme is Disney's Thunder Mountain Railroad, at least I think. So I knew there was a Qdoba in concourse B, but I'm pretty sure they closed right before I landed and there was no Taco Bell. So I settled for McDonald's in concourse A. Objective complete. My next objective was to scope out places to sleep. Sleeping in airports is notoriously difficult because the benches have those armrests that make it pretty much impossible to lie down. In concourse A, there was a rest and recharge area with some reclining seats. I went to scope it out, but it was packed. Sleeping directly next to a bunch of strangers isn't exactly what I was hoping for. Other people in concourse A had just opted for the sleeping on the floor route. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. My search continued, so I took the train to Concourse B. As best as I could tell, the theme for this atrium was an ode to the St. Louis Arch. I read something online about there being a cot in the business center in Concourse B, but I could not find the business center for the life of me. I think it might've been on the other side of security. So that was a bust. I also read on the airport website that there's supposed to be like a fleet of therapy dogs there, but apparently they only work during normal business hours. The thought did occur to me, I wonder if I could find where they sleep so I could just stop in and say hi. Okay, on to Concourse C. The theme here is plane crash into indigenous ruins? Am I the only one getting that vibe? Seems like a weird thing to put in the head of people who are about to board an airplane, right? Now the far end of Concourse C is a recently constructed Southwest Airlines terminal. And according to a Reddit post from someone that worked on the construction, there's a small lower level that stops operating overnight and has some couches in it. Definitely a good option. On my way there, I also spotted a number of couches without armrests that might also be contenders. C seems to be the front runner at this point, but I'll probably make a game time decision when it's time to go to bed. It was time for objective number three, investigate the conspiracies. I ran into a few puzzling mosaics in Concourse A, some cryptic floor decoration in Concourse B, and this hallway of infinite mirrors, but I hadn't found anything too suspicious just yet. The most alarming thing to me is that you're greeted in Concourse B by a statue of the man who's famous for saying the phrase, Houston, we have a problem. Say again, please. Houston, we have a problem. Like, is there a problem at the airport? Is there something they're trying to tell us? Hard to say. After exploring for a little bit, I realized that some of the most famous conspiracy landmarks are next to baggage claim, which happens to be on the other side of security. I could leave and come back, but I know that some airports, they limit the amount of time before a flight you're able to go through security, so I didn't want to run the the risk of getting stuck on the outside of security with nowhere to sleep. I decided to save that investigation for later in my layover. Time for objective number four get some exercise. The airport was definitely big enough to go for a run, but there aren't any rental lockers at the Denver airport. And unfortunately, leaving your bag unattended is like a big no-no at airports. So since I was traveling alone, I would have to ruck it. As I was packing my backpack, I got a notification from my airline that said due to TSA delays, I should plan on getting to the airport as early as possible to avoid disruptions to my trip. And I was like, oh man, I hope I'm early enough. I know you guys watching are worried about me getting altitude sickness, but don't worry. I've trained at the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs, so I'm no stranger to running at higher altitudes. Also, I was going like incredibly slow because I had my backpack and I had to keep coming back and forth to get the camera. <laughs> I completed a 5K and decided to call it quits. I finished off with some light stretching and got a post-run snack from the nearest Hudson News. And after that, I started getting ready for bed. There weren't any public showers and I don't have access to any airport lounges. So I just had to find a bathroom, change, wash my face, put on some deodorant and brush my teeth. Next up, it was time for objective number five.
sleepy time. After my survey of the entire airport, I decided that Concourse C was my best bet. And let me tell you, if you ever have a long layover in the Denver airport, Concourse C is 100% where you want to sleep. If you go to the very, very end, you'll probably get less noise and foot traffic. But man, those black couches, a lot more comfortable than you'd expect. So I hope that's helpful. I woke up around 4.30 a.m. so that I could follow up on objective number three and continue investigating the conspiracies. The gates were starting to come alive again for morning flights, but I went in the other direction and left security to check out some of the more famous landmarks. Outside the airport, there's this 30 foot tall statue of a blue horse with glowing red eyes that apparently toppled over and killed the sculptor before it was finished. It was like a mile away from the actual airport building and not really accessible by foot. So I decided to skip out, especially since the sun wasn't even up yet, but I knew it was out there somewhere. There are also these famous murals near baggage claim that supposedly depict some end of the world scenarios. I looked over every inch of baggage claim and could not find the murals. After spending what seemed like forever looking for them, I eventually just asked the security guard and he told me that they've been moved temporarily for construction. Pretty sketchy if you ask me. There are also some famous gargoyles overlooking baggage claim, and one of them was removed, but I was able to find the second one plus an animatronic one. That one was asleep or off or maybe lulling me into a false sense of security. And finally, there's a time capsule with a mysterious dedication plaque on it. It carries the symbol of the Freemasons. Yeah, like in National Treasure. The Freemasons among our founding fathers left us clues like these. The plaque itself says that the capsule was dedicated by the New World Airport Commission, but there's actually no evidence of an organization with this name ever existing. I felt around for secret buttons and tapped all over that thing just to see if it was maybe some sort of puzzle box, but no luck. The numbers in this date all add up to 33, which is apparently the highest level you can achieve in the Order of the Freemasons. I don't know, I think I'm gonna make sure I'm pretty far away from Denver when they open this box in 2094. Or maybe I should be there so I'll be safe? I don't know, I'll be like 100 years Years old so after investigating all that I could I set out on my final objective which was to find breakfast before boarding my flight so I went back through security and headed to concourse B to grab a chicken biscuit and a couple donuts halfway through the donuts I realized that Kidoba was open as far as I know Kidoba only serves breakfast at airports so this was like too good of an opportunity to pass up I went ahead and grabbed a second breakfast and then took one final train ride back to concourse A to catch my flight after I finished the breakfast bowl I also finished the donuts from earlier I realized I looked super tired and didn't not smell very good, but it was time for both my layover and my investigation to come to an end. So even though I didn't find any indisputable evidence of these conspiracy theories, it's definitely possible that this place is prepped for some sort of doomsday scenario, or maybe to become the capital in the Hunger Games. My theory is that all the important people are going to fly in and go straight to the Cheyenne Mountain bunker, while all the peasants like you and me are going to be penned up and left to fend for ourselves and what's left of the airport. And if that's the case, all I got to say is that I called dibs on one of the black couches in Terminal C. More than anything, this layover reminded me that just about anything can be an adventure if you want it to be. And hey, before you go, a quick update. A few weeks ago, I shared my goal of becoming the top Sam Reed on YouTube. And as of this week, I've achieved that goal. So thank you so much for making that possible. Who knows what's next? Also, my condolences to Australian actor Sam Reed for losing that spot. Sorry about that. Uh, hit me up if you ever want to join forces. All right, that's it for this episode of the Studio Review. Let me know in the comments if there are other unsolved mysteries that you'd like me to investigate. And hey, just remember that even when it doesn't feel like it, it's going to be okay. I'll see you soon.